Hey everyone, you are tuning into the AfterBuzz TV coverage of Miss America. We are going to be talking all things Miss America 2.0, especially the lack of swimsuits. Stay tuned, you definitely don't want to miss it. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz what is up, After Buzzers? We are here to talk all things Miss America 2019. It is Miss America 2.0, and they made yes. that very clear last night. Um, I'm your host, Danny Golub, co host. What's it's your up? boy, Jay Lamar, and all I do is win, win, hey. win. What's going on? It's your girl, Brittany Q Hill, my little invisible crown. So excited to be on this show. And yeah, Brittany uh, pr- participated in some pageants herself, yes. so we are going to have some great insights. Miss America went through a ton of changes this year. They basically said that the annual competition is no longer necessarily a beauty pageant, but rather more of a job interview. And especially during this Me Too era, they eliminated the bathing suit portion of the competition. They added a red carpet. It was very much about the women themselves mm-hmm. rather than what they looked like. That's and right. Which was dope. It was, it was mm-hmm. great. I really, really loved it. A lot of back and forth on Twitter, though, about whether people liked it, didn't like it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah we'll, <laughs> well, we're going to break it all down. Uh, it really was, though, a new era of Miss America. On their website, they said the competition reflects a greater inclusiveness, giving more women the opportunity to earn scholarships and compete for the job of I'm Miss here America. For it. And dumb. you said, like, you've competed before, and it really yes. is a job. Like, these women it are dedicated their whole life. It is a job. A lot of people go into it thinking that it's just all glitz and glam. You're going to be on the red carpet. Yes, all that is a part of it. However, it is a job. Work. You are going to charity works. You're doing speaking engagements. It's 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 a job. Yeah. Oh, it is. And, and the amount of charity that they do, I mean, I just follow Miss America on Instagram, and I see mm-hmm. last year it was Kara, and she was literally day after day after yeah. day. Every day. It's around press. the clock. Yeah, it, it really is. And it's um, a lot of unseen stuff. Oh, ho, ho, you have of, no idea. Yeah, that yeah. Was, there's a lot dope. that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, if you didn't watch, we're about to reveal who the winner was. Uh, <laughs> <Spoiler> <laughs> alert. The winner was Miss uh, Nia Franklin, and she is from New York. Ooh. She is just, gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. gorgeous. So, like, Ooh. I might be a little biased because she's from, so she was representing the state of New York. She's actually from my city, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yep. So, shout out to putting the city on the map. Yeah, yep, she is. And she, I mean, she couldn't be more, like, well-rounded she's as well as gorgeous. What a great representation for this first time uh-huh. to have a Miss America 2.0. Yep. She was the perfect person. And that's Kara crowning her last year's Miss America. Um, this is my favorite moment. Yeah, that's when, they, so when they just, yeah it's, yeah, it's emotional. It's very sweet. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she, she was the first for this new format, which is a big deal. And mm-hmm. it will be interesting to see how it's different this year than it has been in the past yeah. Yeah. And, and how it's similar. Um, but I think that she is going to be a great, great First, 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 uh, first new Miss America. And what's interesting is Miss America has been Miss New York for the uh, four out of the last mm-hmm. seven years. Wow, yeah. um, which is crazy. So if you're really interested in pageants, maybe you should move to New York. <laughs> New York it's like right. the good luck charm. But the top fifteen, we had Miss Minnesota in there, Miss DC, Miss Idaho, Miss Wisconsin, Miss Nebraska, a lot of Midwest, you know, mm-hmm. um, Miss Oklahoma, Miss Alabama. They, I mean, they really did cover the map. Miss California wasn't in there, so oh Aww. well, too bad. Um, <laughs> Can I just say that maybe California next is actually one of the the most challenging states to compete in and that's the one that you competed in i did yeah but i did the usa system but i did compete in california and it's tough competition is thick california is and a lot of girls actually will leave the state of california to go and win in another state and i wonder how it works though because could nia have competed for north carolina but she so how it works is that you have to be a resident in that state for six months so i can leave here and go to north carolina but i would have to be a resident there for six months Mm. before i can compete in that state what's the difference between the two competitions between miss america and miss usa for like um, our new viewers and yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> so the stigma is the USA organization, Miss Universe organization is the sexier pageant. Whereas Miss America is more scholarship based. You don't get a scholarship. Well, I mean, it just depends. You don't typically get a scholarship with Miss Universe. Um, Miss it, USA proceeds and goes forward to Miss Universe. Exactly. Whereas Miss America does not. Right. And then the Miss America system is usually scholarship based. Miss, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. so I think they even took that another step further this year. And Twitter was really back and forth. There were a lot of people that were very here for it. Um, mm-hmm. One user said, that she was proud to be watching with her daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but another, you know, I was just scrolling through Twitter and another said, you know, 2.0 isn't working, let's get 3.0. Like, I think some people mm-hmm. missed the super glamorous beauty aspect of it. What I did yeah. like that, uh, I think it is part of Miss USA, but Miss Teen USA, they had like a athleisure mm-hmm. portion of it yeah. rather than swimsuit. So they had them wearing, you know, like workout clothes, fitness, gear, um, yeah. fitness and showing like strong bodies. Yeah. Um, 
Which is good for the teens. Which is good. Which is good for the teens. And, you know, I I do still wish, though, that there was a little bit more body diversity in America. because Because while you have other kinds of diversity, there isn't a lot of body Physical diversity. diversity. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, it, a lot of the women are still, regardless of whether or not we're looking at them in a bathing suit or not, right. they all are fit. Yeah. As, like, yeah. And they're like super thin. And not to say that if you aren't super thin that you're not fit. I'm saying that I would like to see more I inclusion. Think, especially with representing a country like America. You're representing yeah. America. Mm-hmm. Um, these are beautiful women, but mm-hmm. they don't represent the true women within our country these are beautiful women mm-hmm. but i wish like you said we had a diverse because group of... because there, there's beauty in all sizes and absolutely I think that that, 100%. I, think I would like to see maybe next year a little bit more of that because i think they are taking the steps and the pageant world i'm sure you can attest to is mm-hmm. very rigid and very traditional in its ways yeah and so it's nice to see that they're taking some steps in the direction of mm-hmm. inclusivity i would like to see even more in the future i would yeah. too i would like to see some Nicki minaj bodies some cardi yeah, b some bodies curves. you know what i'm saying yeah. some kelly price bodies i want to see all that in the yeah. miss america pageant. that'd yeah. be interesting Mm -hmm. It would. Um, And because I think because modeling has become so much more inclusive, I would like to see it. And because a lot of these girls are also models. Yeah. Yes, and, yeah. and so it would be nice to see a little bit more of that. Um, and uh, there was some current controversy also surrounding the talent portion. But first, Miss New York was, I mean, across the board, everyone said her talent was just by far the best. I, she did an opera of Quado Menvo, which is mm-hmm. the opera from the opera La Boheme, which Twitter was just like legit dazzled by her vocal talent. <laughs> we have um, a little bit of a video of it I right see. here. I'm not sure if we could hear it super well, but she, I mean, also just this dress that she wore during her performance she was also like so Barbie. amazing. Mm-hmm. She does, and her skin is just glowing. Look like that dress. And she, and she knew how to girl. work it, yeah. While she was performing, I mean, everyone was just literally shook by her talent. I want to hear her voice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty impressive. So, wow. (laughs) Sometimes with the competitions, you know, some of the talent is halfway there, I would say. Yeah. Hers on point. Hers is, she's not just like an average opera singer. She is the real deal. Yeah. She's really, really good. You can't fake that talent. She ain't lip syncing either. No. Oh, no, they can't do that up here. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, I think you get the point. But but some, I mean, she's mesmerizing. She just grabs you and yeah. reels you she in. She is, and look at that. She's working her face too. She knows yeah. she doing. <laughs> With a little finger. That yeah. color of that dress, that's a popular yeah. color so of the weekend. She, that was Cardi B's color. This it was. Weekend as it well. was that fashion week. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she also knew how to work her color. She wore that bright red. She wore the white that she wore at the end. We saw her um, in her winning gown earlier. Beautiful but on her yeah. skin tone. She she knew what worked for her. And mm-hmm. and um, the controversy though surrounding the talent portion on Twitter was, like I said, while we would like to see even more body types included, a lot of women who would like to be able to compete in pageants said that the the talent portion is really limiting to people who can like do um, like singing or dancing or something that can be done kind of in two minutes, Mm -hmm. where as, you know, athletes, female athletes or female, you know, scientists or something like they would love to be able to showcase talents in that way Mm -hmm. that maybe aren't necessarily. I I remember last year in the Miss America pageant, one of the girls was a nurse. Mm -hmm. And they did show a video clip of her, I think, like Mm -hmm. talking about an experience she had as a nurse. Like, I would love to see more of that too. Like, what if there was like a, you know, badass soccer player or something. Right. Like, I want to, I think that there, is, it is kind of limiting to, I hate to say it, but like very stereotypical female talent. I like, the, I like them to be relatable. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you said, like, like last, last year I watched it with the nurse. I yeah. love that. Or like some, like if they're a school teacher or something yeah. like that. I like those relatable moments because mm-hmm. I feel like that's that's us relating to American women. Yeah. Exactly. There We have working women here who do a vast variety of different jobs. Yeah. I like to see that. It limits them to being only able to perform things that are like stage appropriate yeah. as mm-hmm. opposed to like like you said a soccer player. You, I mean what can you do with that? Yeah. So mm-hmm. unfortunately that, that portion of it was kind of like limiting I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But But at the same time it is a, I mean, as much as they're calling it more of a job interview now, like it is still a beauty pageant and there is mm-hmm. that portion of it that is very traditional and there are other spaces for talented people to showcase. Like, I mean, they can't go to the Olympics to, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think, I mean, while I agree, I also think it's important to kind of show, I love showcase that. what they do. I love hearing this as a job interview. I would love to wear a ball gown. Yeah, as your a job. job. <laughs> Honey, listen. Two jobs um, every day. And twirl in. Yes. <laughs> Another very buzzworthy moment, Miss Michigan, when she introduced herself, you know how they all get up in the beginning? Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. Um, made it political, which, you know yes. what? I'll hear for it, because that is what 2018 oh, is about. Let's have go, a quick girl. listen. Yeah. 84% of the U.S. fresh water, but none for its residents to drink. 
I am Miss Michigan, Emily Sioma. Yes, what okay. a way to use your platform, yes. though. That's so, absolutely amazing. It mm-hmm. is amazing, because Flint, Michigan, you know, there is no water. And it's become like a left and right debate when really it's about <laughs> this This state has 84% fresh water, but there's no, no water for Flint. the residents to drink in, in Flint. And I think it was amazing that for her moment, she could have literally said anything like, hi, I'm whatever, from whatever, doesn't matter. Emily got up there and she said Used something to make a difference. Platform. That was awesome. And you know what? And I think that that's what this competition about. It's not about winning. Like, she won by yeah. doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. would love to, her, to see her continue to be a spokesperson for the state of Michigan right. in, yeah. Regards yeah. To, yeah, I agree. in regards to the Flint water issue. It's funny because Honestly, week after week after week, you hear about the Flint water crisis, like but nobody talks more. about it. Last week at Aretha Franklin's funeral, um, somebody got up and spoke and said one of Aretha's final thoughts was that she really wanted somebody to help the city of Flint figure out the water oh, wow. crisis. She was like, we got the week, we keep hearing about it. Like, yeah. what are they going to do about it? So I would really love to see her take this platform mm-hmm. and completely run with it. Yeah. That was awesome of her. Yeah. That was dope. Yeah, it was. And, you know, even to become the local Miss Michigan, mm-hmm. she had to do a lot of charity work. And yeah. I think that's, like, been her focus. And so I was really yeah. glad that she was able to bring that to the Absolutely. forefront in, yeah. in her in her moment. Because, you know, when you get up on that stage, mm-hmm. you don't know if you're gonna how much farther you're going to go. You don't exactly. know if you're going to get any moments to say anything. So yeah. she took she took that moment. took the moment and ran with it, which I yeah. really respect. And yeah. uh, while I think it was political and important, I don't think it was like overkill. I don't think she yeah. was like shoving no. anything down no. anyone's throat. She said a fact, right. and that was it. Yeah, and it was something that was important. And to her. the reason why it was so smart of her is because, like you said, they don't know how far they're gonna go. But let's say she did make it to the top fifteen, she just made herself stand out completely. Even more. That's the girl even more. About the water so crisis. now the you know judges are watching this mm-hmm. girl. Not only are they watching her, it's like. We're all talking about Nia, but we're also talking about Emily. Everyone's talking about Emily because she was the one that did something different different last night. And, you know, I think that's what's so special about these competitions is it gives people who don't necessarily have a voice a voice. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Um, And so I thought that that was really special. Way Um, to use your platform, girl. Yeah, good job. Yeah, and I love that. And I think that so many... um, not just girls in pageants, but you know when you're when you're on national TV like that, you're afraid of doing something like that because mm-hmm. it, it, again, it is so traditional. It is kind of rigid, and yeah. there people are very set in their ways. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was cool that she stepped out of the comfort zone a little mm-hmm. bit yeah. and did something different. Good. You know, she stepped yes. up to that microphone, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she, that <laughs> that she did. Um, do you want to? I think you have a quick word for yeah, us. Yes, you know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of stepping up to the microphone, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> half the buzzes our network produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite after shows from dramas to reality tv to sci-fi and so much more there's no mo- no network that works harder than we here at after buzz tv mm-hmm. but we need your help we're asking that you please subscribe to one or more of our youtube channels by subscribing to our channels youtube will suggest content that tailors your exact need and it will also help after buzz grow mm-hmm. and if you're worried about those pesky notifications ugh, you can turn them <laughs> off. You don't even need them. <laughs> so hit the subscribe button right now and check out our other AfterBuzz TV channels right now as well. Let us know what you think in the comments. And thank you so much for making us here at AfterBuzz TV the ESPN of TV talk. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. That was beautiful. <laughs> um, so back back to this competition. Um, I, I'm interested to see, you know, each year whoever gets the crown of Miss America picks some certain organizations really to focus right. on. Yeah. And um, in one of her answers last night, Nia did mention that um, she is offering herself as an example for like healthy body image and like promoting, you know, like a strong body and not like something super skinny. So I wonder mm-hmm. if she's going to do something in that realm. She also, in her acceptance speech, spoke about her dad being a survivor of cancer. Mm. Um and she thanked all the women behind her. So I wonder, you know, I think her dad had lymphoma, if I mm-hmm. remember correctly. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see, like, what she does going forward. And, I mean, like you said, the woman who wins this is putting in a lot of work. work. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of, you know, and, and, and not only her, but all the other women. They they still represent their state for the rest of the year. You know, There's, that's what I said. I would love to see a follow-up show. That would be Like, cool. six months down the line of mm-hmm. all the participants. And to see, like, if they're still continuing that philanthropy work. That, that work. is a great idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are y'all doing now? You got the title. Yeah. You didn't win Miss America, but you still yeah. won Miss California. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, what are you doing to that is a great uphold idea. that title? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a producer you and that. content you know, creator by call heart. Her. So, yeah. can you name me, call me. Um, the organization. That's uh, amazing. So, so, what do you guys think of this new format in this, uh, I mean, in the Me Too era? Do you think it's appropriate that they, uh, especially as someone who's competed, do you think it's appropriate that they eliminated the bathing suit portion completely, or do you still want to see something? 
like that in this kind I of competition. I appreciate the changes because they're taking the pressure off of having to have this perfect body. However, one of the things that I did appreciate about um, the physical fitness portion, which is also known as the swimsuit portion, is that I wasn't usually in the gym. Like, I, you know what I mean? I'm naturally thin, so the whole working out thing would never appeal to me. But because I was competing and I knew that I was being um, critiqued on my body, it kind of enabled me to, like, get in the gym and to be healthy and be fit and make it a lifestyle. So that's what I appreciate about it. Okay. So yeah. maybe not so much eliminate it all together, but not place so much emphasis on that particular competition area. I think it... I missed it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I, you're not alone because I mean, I, a lot of people on Twitter were saying, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. like I've been watching Miss America for almost an hour and a half, and no sight of actual Miss America. Yeah. That's what one user said. Because like, I yeah. think that's what people are used to. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 50 50 torn on. It. I wish that okay, if they didn't do the swimsuit portion, if maybe all the girls or they they want to do it individually, if all the girls would have came together mm -hmm. and maybe did something in regards to fitness, maybe a fitness workout mm -hmm. yeah. for 20 minutes, like yoga or something like yeah. that, in front of national TV to show that you know we're all fit, but we don't have to wear bathing suits to be fit. We have our cute little yoga outfits or something on. Yeah. I wish I would have did something like that to still emphasize mm -hmm. the importance of being healthy mm -hmm. and yeah. competing for the what title. What I do miss about it was the confidence that it yeah. that, that it exudes mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. like, even I think if, you, like you said, if they did wear, like, you know, a sports bra and yoga pants yeah. or something, like, and if that were to include more body types, I think that would be honestly Dope. so cool mm -hmm. if you got a bunch of girls up there who all look super different, yeah. different, you know, like, mm -hmm. backgrounds, ethnicities, body types, and got them all in the same workout outfit. Like, yeah. Then, and did a workout. Nike yeah. could not even that. like not even necessarily workout, but just like did some like you know like you said like poses. Some I don't know. I think that like sh showing that sort of confidence and showing that you can be okay wearing whatever you want and no yeah. one can call you any names for that. Like I think that that portion of it also is important to show young yeah, right. women. And yeah. I don't like the critiquing of people's bodies. I think it should be a embracing. And I honestly think it would be interesting to incorporate it in the competition, but not necessarily have it go towards your score. score yeah. I would say, and I don't know because we didn't watch the pre preliminary competition, but I think it would have been cool to eliminate it for the prelims. That way the finals are not based on your body type, but once you do make it to the finals on that stage, now you can show off your body. And, yeah. I, and it's not even the body. It's so funny that you say it because it's like when I watch it and I've watched the swimsuit portions in the past, mm -hmm. I'm rarely looking at like their abs and their legs. I'm looking at like she is glowing. glowing. She yeah, is the fit. Confidence. She is strong or like she is she looks empowered like yeah. up on that stage like strutting her stuff in that mm -hmm. like amount of clothes. There is something empowering about that and there's so it much is. I mean on social media right now of people of literally all body types like mm -hmm. the whole like free the nipple like let's mm -hmm. be out there right. and like, mm -hmm. like embrace your body. I think that that there is something to be included with that, I think, if yeah. it had m more body diversity. I yeah. agree, I agree. And, you know, for me, I watched that portion just to look at the swimsuits. I mm -hmm. love the swimsuit fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this year, baby, because, you know, the high-waisted yeah. uh, swimwear thing. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I would love to see and them in a high-waist. And you get the chance to really show and yeah. kill that runway. Because yeah. the, the evening gown portion is a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. They play you know, fun music central. for the bathing yeah. suit portion, yeah. yeah. So like I said, even if, maybe if they would just did, like, a special segment yeah. and maybe took, like, 10, 20 of the girls mm -hmm. and just did a cute little special segment, what do you do to work out yeah or something like that would be cool or yeah like what do you do to like feel healthy yeah. or like feel empowered Power, or feel yeah. strong yeah yeah I, I do like that i think it would be interesting to see if they keep it this way in the future i think it's also going to be interesting to see if you know miss usa starts to go this way because like you said that is like the sexier of the two competitions is. is this going to impact other pageants is this going to impact local pageants because while i know miss america is not doing it that way i know that the local competitions are still doing it doing that way right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so i think it'll be interesting to see the trickle down effect that this has and mm -hmm. if if, you know, going forward, more pageants are going to be seen as more of a job. And, you know, because I think that it is, like, a really incredible thing that a mm -hmm. person can do. Yeah. But for some reason, it does sometimes have a negative connotation. It does. I think the same way that, like, sororities have a negative connotation sometimes. Yeah. Like, I did one, and I did more community service than my friends in college mm -hmm. did. Like, who yeah, didn't yeah, do yeah. one? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that, like, it has that same... And I don't know if that's because it's women or whatever, mm -hmm. but I think that there's something to be discussed there about, yeah. you know, how it is... A real job, and I think yeah. it's important that they did bring that to the yeah, forefront. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the negativity comes from people who don't actually really understand right. what goes into mm -hmm. the competition, preparing for the competition, interview, interview pre preparation. And I will gladly say that because of my um, my time in pageantry, that's what's what really owned my interview skills. Like I can walk into any room for any interview, and I know I'm gonna nail it because I had that preparation, that yeah. training. Oh. I, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, the two hosts last night were Ross Matthews, who we love here. Mm -hmm. He has his own. Hey, Ross. <laughs> um, and then uh, Carrie Ann and Abba from. Dancing with the Stars. Mm -hmm. So I love that they had them too. Too, they were like really playful and fun. Yeah. And, you know, they also had a moment where they poked fun. Like this is Miss America 2.0. Like we're gonna stop saying that. We know there's no bathing suits. <laughs> like because 
uh, they knew that people were going to be a little bit shook by yeah. the fact that there were no bathing suits and that's yeah. why a lot of people You know it would have been cute though if them two would have came out in swimwear. <laughs> yeah, like, since, just like, right, since they like, can, we got it covered. Right, right, since they can compete with it, we can. Right, we like, it would be cute. <laughs> it would. Um, yeah, I think that, but I think that them two did a really good job like keeping the show moving. I'm always so nervous at the end now too after the Steve Harvey thing with Ms. Yeah. I'm like, um, I think we you do sure? have, I think we do Reading have the winning, fundamental. the winning moment here. Um, this is the last, is the my, last two. It's my favorite moment. Uh, I mean like, I, I just get like filled with joy when I watch too because it's I'm nervous even though, though I know who wins like, like, I'm nervous you watching this. It's so um, nerve wracking. But I really do believe that like they are happy for each other. Yeah. Yeah. So much I think of women is like you know putting them against each other. But yeah. I don't feel like this does that. I feel like these girls really do have each other's backs. Yeah. Um, and Carrie and Ross are here, and they're joking at this point, being like, you know, let's let's cut, cut to a commercial break. I'll tell you um, one thing, those faces yeah. are painted. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. Her, those eyebrows yeah. on Miss I mean, America. Yeah, and I mean, her, her, her white just... See her reaction, she's like, she kind of, I feel like she, she knew she was going to win. She was going to win. No, look at she's like... Or maybe she was just shocked, I don't know. I think she was kind of shocked. I think you just Look like, at this, look, she, see, see how she, no. Thank, she knew she was going to oh, win. Oh, her parents Between are... the two, she knew she was going to take that home. Um... I mean, yeah, her speech so was really cute. beautiful. She said, I feel really blessed right now. I want to thank God because without him, I wouldn't be standing here. It took a lot of perseverance to get here, and I want to thank my family. Mm -hmm. She talked about her dad's cancer. She talked about all the women behind her and how they've had such oh, a wonderful week beautiful. a wonderful week together. And this, yeah, this is a tradition of Kara, who is last year's Miss America, mm -hmm. pinning the crown onto this year's. Um, and she I wonder what kind of bobby pins they use. She uh, heavy duty ones to get that crown <laughs> today. Who were the judges? Because I just glimpsed Layla Ali. Was she one of them? I think she might. I think she was yeah. either one of the judges, but she's not. Oh, was that they Melissa also McCarthy? Had passed. They also had some past Miss Americas mm -hmm. on the panel. Um, but she, uh, yeah, so Nia said she has New York grit. She's moved over five times because subletting is so expensive. And she just talked about how she was like a real person, you know. And mm -hmm. she, what, like, living in New York takes hard work. And mm -hmm. she came like up, LA. she came mm -hmm. up on a fellowship because she's an artist, and she just like wants to share her platform and be an advocate for the arts and students to have a quality education. That's and awesome. yeah. And I, so I think that she's gonna do a lot of great work this year, and I'm excited to see what's to come for her. And I'm excited to see what's to come for her after her Miss America career, because so many of them have gone on to do such amazing things. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Whether that be, you know, some of them have gone on to be like lawyers. Or or doctors or you know politicians or working TV and their yeah. hosts or whatever it is. I think it, yeah. cre it creates a wonderful platform. Mm -hmm. um, this is an amazing beginning for her yeah. and yeah. all the other Miss America um, mm -hmm. contestants. For, to me, the first year, me that first year is, means a lot. Yeah, you have opportunity to prove yourself like no other. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited to see how she'll prove herself. And the like exposure. you said, what's, what's like what's the next chapter after yeah. Miss America? Yeah, because yeah. you have to, to me, you have to think about it. You do because as time winds down, you know, this time next year, you're done. Yeah, yeah you know. Is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it'll be really interesting to see what she does, and I'm really excited for her. And I think they couldn't, have, based on what I watched last night, I mean, they couldn't have picked a better person to yeah, be the absolutely. first, the first representation of this new platform going forward. She seems like someone who is going to be a great leader mm -hmm. in in the community. And I also think that she's not the type of girl that you would look at maybe outside of this, and you wouldn't know that she does the pageants. I think that's like what's so interesting mm -hmm. is you know you look at all these women and how different they all look and all the different backgrounds they come from and. Like you said, like there can be like a bit of a stigma attached, but it's the, because people don't really know. Yeah, you know. I, I wonder what know. the Miss America salary is. I don't know if it year. has a salary. I'm, it must because they're they're talking about it well, like it again, is a job. Well, again, it's mostly scholarship based, so they do get some money, but it's it goes to. Like words. I know that second play, uh, the first runner up, which is very confusing terminology. First mm -hmm. runner up, she got twenty five thousand dollars in scholarship. The okay. fourth runner up mm -hmm. got like ten thousand dollars in scholarship. So I think it's like for continued education. I think Miss America though, because she doesn't get to do go back to her school, job for yeah. the year and do school that year, I think she she must get some sort of stipend. But yeah. they, they're endorsed, too. I guess they yeah, get they, some they of that are, And a lot of them, like, you know, I'm sure all, like, every time she makes an appearance or her travel, she, she gets paid, paid. I'm sure yeah. she gets paid. So, and I know that, like, the money probably goes directly to the Miss America Foundation because... Again, they do a lot of really good work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to see what she does. And it was fun watching, and I'm excited to see how it impacts future pageants and and other pageants, yeah. you know, and Miss America going forward. And yeah. I hope it motivates some young girls, like, of all different shapes and sizes to, yeah. to, to, get, to, in to get in there and try yeah. it. Or, or even if not this, like, get up there and try something that's out of their comfort zone. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, life's too short, you know, to yeah. not, not get up there and try something yeah. new. And if you don't get anything from it, what it will do is boost your confidence yeah. for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's a really good point. So whether yeah. it's, you know, trying out for a team you didn't want to try out for, yeah. you know, trying out for the school play or doing a pageant, whatever it is, like, yeah. I think it's just embracing whatever it is that you want to try. And I think the it. most interesting thing is by them taking out the swimsuit portion, that means that they're willing to um, succumb to some type of change mm -hmm. um, to accommodate 
what's going on in society. Yeah. You know, with the Me Too movement, they said, okay, That's you know, what, yeah, we're, that was their main we're gonna move away from the uh, the bathing suit portion. So to me, it's like, okay, what other doors are they willing to open? Um, and whether doors are willing to close mm -hmm. to accommodate what's going on within our society. I think that's yeah. a very smart move. I it's agree. a very conscious move, mm -hmm. and it's a very respectful move. I agree, and I think it's like baby steps, you know? Like, yeah. they made this small change this year. I don't know if that change is going to continue to next year or mm -hmm. if it will be that change plus other but ones. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Um, I think that with the pageant community, making any sort of change yes. is challenging. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think that they knew they had to do it in a small well, steps well, yeah, kind yeah of. absolutely yeah. um so i think that this was a good first step and absolutely. as you said it'll be interesting to I, see where I would it love goes. to hear the girls behind the stage like were they looking forward to the swimsuit portion yeah, or right? you know i read a as, buzzfeed article a lot of them did comment on it beforehand like on the red the red carpet portion i guess was now 20 percent of the competition i think that was where the swimsuit portion once was mm -hmm. a lot of them talked about it on the red carpet and they talked about um how they were, I don't know if it was because they were media prep to say this, but they were all very on board with this new method. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, like, I none of them really said anything otherwise. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it'll be, I think I think they obviously were on board with it because yeah. they were they were doing it and yeah. they were probably were like in the moment and that's what yeah. they were being told was happening. But I'm sure a lot of them had to do the swimsuit portion to get to where they were. I think that it was genius though that they chose to incorporate the red car carpet portion because a lot of their year is going to be a lot of you know press. Being, you know press. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to conduct your interviews, what how to respond, what not to say. So I think that was genius. You yeah. know what would have been dope if today they would have threw a pool party. <laughs> and they and all got a warm bathing suit. Right, yeah, like it makes me feel like it's so dope. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really something. Um, well, yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of all we have from this. But it was mm -hmm. uh, they they made that announcement in June that they were changing it for you know September. So it'll be interesting to see over the course of the next year What's if that? they make any more changes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, but or if they, they even keep this change. If they do, yeah, that'll mm -hmm. be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you guys so much for joining um, me. Thank if you for if anyone wants to continue the conversation with you guys on social media, where can they find you? You guys can find me on all social media platforms at I am Jay Lamar. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Brittany Q Hill. That's B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y. Our local beauty queen. Yes. <laughs> and you can find me everywhere on social media at Danny Golub. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and chatting about Miss America with us. We will see you next time. See you later, guys. Gotta do the wave. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later.